In this video I want to show you what is in GIF inside Angular and how you can use it. And actually you might think now, ok, but this is super basic stuff, I know how to use in GIF, but actually there are quite a lot of advanced features that you also must know. So the first question is what is in GIF? And actually it is a possibility to write inside our templates inside Angular if conditions like inside JavaScript. So we can write here some markup, for example a div, and inside this div let's render foo, and now we want to add here an if condition. To do this we are writing star, then ng if, and it is important it is camel case, it's not all lowercase, equals, and here is a string. And inside we typically write some expression. For example here we can just write true and save this. As you can see in browser here we can see our foo string. If we are writing here not true but false, obviously we don't see this div at all. But now the question is what is happening inside our elements. As you can see here is my body, here is a root, and here is h1. And actually as you can see here our element was not rendered at all. You can see here just this comment and this comment is for us as a developers to know that here we have an if condition. Which actually means it doesn't work like a CSS, it is removed completely in DOM or it is added in DOM when in GIF is true. The next important point to remember that we are passing inside an expression, which actually means here it is not some random attribute, it is an expression, it is not a string. Which actually means in this case this false is not a string, it is an expression, because this code inside will be evaluated and we can put any valid TypeScript code here. Which actually means here we have false, then we don't show this div, if here we will write zero, we won't show this div, because we are evaluating zero and as you can see here our element is not rendered. But if we have here 1 and this is a number, then as you can see here our element is rendered, because this value exists. The same goes with string. If you want here to pass a string, you must write it like a string, which actually means in double quotes we are writing single quotes and here is some full string. In this case it will also be rendered. The same goes for example for an empty string. As you can see empty string does not render an element, because the empty string is falsy. But you must remember just like in plain TypeScript, if we will write here empty object or empty array, as you can see here is a value, because here we just evaluate that object exists. And obviously if you have an object with some value, like for example a equals 1, then this element also will be rendered. And now you might ask me, ok, we have so many possibilities, what is the best practice? And actually the best practice is simply to use here just a single boolean and nothing else. Which actually means inside our app component, here if we want to write some condition, then we need to create a boolean for this. Which actually means here we can write maybe is opened, and we know that it is true. In this case we are using this variable inside ngif. It is super easy to read, you don't have any logic inside your template, because the whole logic is written inside your component. And this is extremely easy to support. If you will start to pack a lot of logic inside your templates, they will really fast become unsupportable. It is also possible to write with this if condition else or if else. But actually I would say that in production not a lot of people are using it, because it is not that comfortable. What we can do here we have now is opened and we can write an else condition. So here we put semicolon and then else and here for example no foo or no template. And actually now we must create this no template reference, which actually means after this ng if we are writing ng template, and here we put hash and the name that we provided there. Now here we must close ng template and write our template inside. For example, we don't see foo. Let's save this and check in browser. As you can see here is our foo, because our property is opened isn't true. If we will try to write here false, then as you can see in browser we are rendering we don't have foo. Why it is not comfortable? Because actually we are creating here ng template and not just a div or something, and we are providing this template here inside else. This is why not a lot of people are writing code like this, typically you will see something like div is opened, then we are writing here opened, 
and then you just copy paste this div and you write ng if not is opened, then you are writing here not opened. And we are not using any templates and this is much easier to read. We have also another possibility. Sometimes we don't want to create additional container like div, but we need ng if condition. Instead of div, we can use here ng container. And this is special tag of Angular, and this tag won't be rendered inside our DOM, which actually means here we are checking this element foo. And as you can see inside DOM, we have just a string foo. We don't have here some ng container, and we don't have here a div, which actually means if you have some strict CSS and you don't need a wrapper, then you can use ng container and not div, for example. But actually, if you're using ng container, you must also want to use if else. And this is completely possible. Here we're writing is opened, then colon. Here we're writing word then. And here is the template which will be rendered. And in our case here we can write then, for example, foo template, then semicolon, else, no template. And here we can remove foo inside ng container. We don't need it anymore. But after our ng container, we must create two templates. This is why here we have ng template, and here is hash foo template, and we are closing our ng template, and we can write inside foo. And now I will copy paste again this ng template, and we need to name it no template. And inside we can write, for example, no foo. Let's save this and check. As you can see here, foo is rendered because it's open, property isn't true, and we are coming inside then, and we are rendering foo template. And if we will try to set is opened to false, then as you can see in browser we are rendering here no foo. So we have this approach, but it is more difficult. This is why most of the people just use ng if some condition and ng if with negated condition. And the last thing that you must know about ng if is the keyword as. And this is super important because this is almost the best way how you can write a sync request inside Angular and how you can combine data for your template. What I'm talking about at all. Let's remove everything and write here a div. And now what we can do here, we can write ng if and some asynchronous property here. For example, let's say that we have a property foo with dollar because this is an RxJS stream. And typically you are just writing here a sync and then you render something inside. And most often people will simply write here foo dollar a sync again. In this case, first of all, here we are using stream foo inside ng if to check it for true or false. And then we are using this stream foo to render our value. Let's try to create foo property now inside our app component. This is why here I can simply write foo dollar equals, and here we can write off, and off is coming from rxjs, and inside we are passing just a string foo. Let's check if it's working now. I am reloading the page, and we see here foo, which actually means we use this stream twice inside our template. First of all, for ng if condition, and secondly, to render a value. This is already bad, because we used this stream not once inside our template, but twice. And it might also happen that you have properties inside this property, which actually means it is an object. And you are writing here dot title, and then you just copy paste this code and you write dot description. And every single time when we are writing this code, we are referencing this stream, which is essentially bad, because we create more and more subscriptions to our stream. And we can easily avoid it by using as keyword. For this, after a sync, we simply must write as with a space and then some name, and it will be our local property. For example, typically, if you have a stream like foo dollar, then you will name your local property without dollar, for example, as foo. And what we can do now inside, we can simply render property foo, which actually means we are not working with stream anymore. We created here a local variable foo and we simply render it. And actually, this is the best variant how you can work with the sync pipes inside your template. And if we are talking about things when you have several properties, it is even easier because we simply render here foo.title and in the next line foo.description and we have just a single subscription for our stream. Now you know everything that you need to know about ngif inside Angular. And actually, if you are interested to see how inside Angular you can create nested comments, make sure to check this video also.